We will have a special combined church-wide 10 a.m. worship service, which will be led by Reverend Don Underwood and special guests, and immediately followed by a reception in honor of Don's many years of ministry. Take advantage of this lovely weather and volunteer at our pumpkin patch this year. It's a great opportunity to connect with the pumpkins, people, or pumpkin people in your church community or small group. Sign up today at cmc.com slash pumpkins. Take the opportunity to commit to learning and growing with your community this fall. Sign up to join one of our many fall classes, studies, or small groups that are about to get started. For more information, visit cumc.com slash adults. If you have any questions regarding service today, reach out to one of our volunteers in the lobby, or if you're online, please email page at cumc.com. Thank you so much for joining us in worship today. I hope you all have a fantastic day. Good morning. Welcome to Christ United. We are so happy that you are here and worship with us, and we're so happy to have all the people online. Let's stand and sing together this morning.
you can grab a seat. Thank you, worship band. My name is Reverend Stephanie Reed Meyer. It is such a joy to be with you all this morning. We want to welcome you to modern worship here at Christ United. If you have not already, there is a QR code on your bulletin. We would love for you to register your attendance with us this morning. Like I say every week, if you're a little more old school, in the back of the chair in front of you or the chair behind you, there should be a uh, form that you can complete and put in the offering basket so that we have your attendance that way. I do want to highlight one one announcement this morning that is at 12 p.m. right after this service we are hosting our very first get to know Christ United it will happen in room in 158 which is on the north end of the building there if you haven't been around Christ United for a while or if you just want to know more we will have directors from each of our ministries there who can tell you some ways to get plugged in and you can learn some history about Christ United too so that's at 12 o'clock today you do not have to register. You can just show up because we're already there. And today is exciting because as you can see, it's Communion Sunday, but also it is World Communion Sunday. Teaser, I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in my sermon. But for now, I have an opening prayer for all of us to join together in on this special World Communion Sunday. Will you pray with me? God of all nations, we give you thanks that we are all made in your image with such rich diversity. On this day, we are in solidarity with the faithful around the world. As we break bread together, we remember that we are still one body in you. Even though we have different languages, cultures, and traditions, different ways of worship, praying, and praising, in solidarity, we drink the cup together of hope, of new life, knowing that your will is for your people to be one body. We are one body, but we are not the same. It is through the gift of diversity that we are able to be your body. We thank you and praise you for making us all who we are, individually and collectively. We each celebrate our own ancestry, culture, and ethnicity. Thank you for uniting us, God. Amen. I invite you now to join us in this offering song. The baskets will be passed, and we thank you for the many ways you generously give to this community. Let's give together. Oh, 
Sunday in the Methodist Church, we celebrate not just Communion Sunday, but World Communion Sunday. This is the day that we recognize just how big the church actually is. No, 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 not just this church. I mean all the churches all around the world. This is the Sunday that we recognize all the different countries and cultures that share our love of God and our following of Jesus. 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 Just like people from different countries might dress differently or look different or speak a different language, the way we worship can be different too. The symbols in our worship space that we are used to seeing in their worship space might seem strange and different to us. In our church, we're used to seeing the cross, the candles, the stained glass windows. But in churches around the world, these things are not necessarily the same. The words we are used to hearing on Sunday mornings, like, Our Father, who art in heaven. Can seem unrecognizable when heard in an unfamiliar language. But we're all saying the same prayer. We're all worshiping the same God. Today, above all other days, we remember that our God is bigger than just this church. Our God is bigger than Plano. Our God is not just the God of Texas. Our God is not just the God of the United States of America. Our God is the God of all people. And everything that happens in all the little churches and all the little countries that you can think of is just as important to God as what happens right here at Christ United in Plano. 
Our God is a God of all people, no matter where they're from, what they sound like, what they look like. And that love that God has for all of God's people is what brings us together. And today we celebrate just that. Remember, God is with you everywhere you go, and each and every one of you is a beloved child of God. Amen. I love that. And those weren't just random people in different languages. Those were actually staff and church members here, which is pretty cool too. Will you join me in prayer? God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In 1930, a Presbyterian minister named Reverend Hugh Thomas Kerr, that's him, Thompson Kerr, he dreamed up the idea of what we are practicing today, World Communion Sunday. He wanted the ecumenical body of Christ to come together and to unite in one of their commonalities, Holy Communion. In 1933, the first World Communion Sunday took place in Pittsburgh, and Reverend Kerr began his quest to get other churches on board to celebrate this. If it's going to be World Communion Sunday, there needs to be more than just one church practicing it, right? However, his idea did not catch on quickly. Uniting churches of different denominations and different understandings is a tough sell. Reverend Kerr's son, who was a teenager during the inception of World Communion Sunday, remembers this. It was during the Second World War that the spirit caught hold because we were trying to hold the world together. Worldwide communion symbolized the effort to hold things together in a spiritual sense. It emphasized that we are one in the spirit and the gospel of Jesus Christ. It was in a moment of desperation and division that World Communion Sunday was accepted into the larger church. And it was more than simply symbolic. It was felt deeply throughout a world that was hurting. I like to imagine that World Communion Sunday caught on because there was this common realization that we're all together in this. And even almost 100 years later, here we are, all gathered together to remember that spark that brought people together amidst war. Today, we unite with those in the faith who have gone before us and with those who will come after us. We, re we unite with our neighbors both here and far. We unite with people who love Jesus. Together, we will celebrate this holy meal as a united people. Our scripture reading this morning is the feeding of the 5,000 from Mark's gospel, which is the oldest gospel, also the shortest. Chris, uh, during his sermon this morning, ranked it as the fourth best gospel out of four. Uh, for me, it's at the top because I love the brevity and how Mark cuts to the chase. So he and I are opposites in this. But as usual, before we get into the reading this morning, I want to give us some context of this story. We are going to be in the sixth chapter of Mark, and I cannot tell you how much happens in this single chapter. I'm going to try, but there is a whole lot just in the sixth chapter of Mark. We begin with Jesus going to his hometown where he is met with disbelief from the people and ultimately he's not welcomed in his hometown. After this, Jesus sends off his 12 disciples in pairs for them to go off and spread the good news with the world. And then, we're still not even to the feeding of the 5,000, y'all. Then we get this really twisted story about King Herod and his wife, who used to be his brother's wife, and also his daughter's thrown in there, but it's not real clear if it's his daughter, if it's his niece. I'm telling you, y'all, their family tree is really something. Anyways, in this story, Herod is hosting this very lavish banquet for all of these important, fancy, upper-class people. 
And at this dinner, he gives the command for the death of John the Baptist. Even though King Herod kind of liked John. That's what's happened all in the sixth chapter, right before we pick up with our reading today. We're going to read it all at once. We're going to be in verses 30 through 44. Hear these words from Mark. The apostles returned to Jesus and told him everything they had done and taught. Remember I told you Jesus set them off to spread the word, so they're reunited, coming back. Many people were coming and going, so there was no time to eat. Jesus said to the apostles, come by yourselves to a secluded place and rest for a while. They departed in a boat by themselves for a deserted place. Many people saw them leaving and recognized them. So they ran ahead from all the cities and arrived before them. When Jesus arrived and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Then Jesus began to teach them many things. Late in the day, his disciples came to him and said, this is an isolated place. It's already late in the day. Send the people away so that they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy something to eat for themselves. Jesus replied, you give them something to eat. But they said to him, should we go off and buy bread worth almost eight months pay and give it to them to eat? Jesus said to them, how much bread do you have? Take a look. After checking, they said, five loaves of bread and two fish. Jesus directed the disciples to seat all the people in groups as though they were having a banquet on the green grass. They sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties. Jesus took the five loaves and the two fish, looked up to the heaven, blessed them, broke the loaves into pieces, and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. He also divided the two fish among them all. Everyone ate until they were full. They filled 12 baskets with the leftover pieces of bread and fish. About 5,000 had eaten. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let the church say, thanks be to God. This may be a familiar story for many of us, you may have even heard a slightly different version where there's another character involved. Yeah, the boy, the little boy, yeah. So in uh, John's gospel, there's actually a little boy who offers five loaves of bread and two fish. This story of the feeding of the 5,000s is actually a story that is found in all four gospels, which is a pretty big deal. There are only a handful of Jesus' ministry prior to his entry into Jerusalem for his last days that are shared by all four Gospels. Typically, I'd add that little fact in as like a fun fact of the day. But on a Sunday where we're focusing on our commonalities as followers of Christ, when we're coming together across different understandings of Christianity to celebrate Holy Communion together, I'd say it's a pretty cool thing that our scripture reading is one of only a few that is found in all four Gospels. It's like even the Gospels are uniting together with us today. In our reading, we see the disciples reunite with Jesus. Then they intend to go and rest. I love a good scripture passage about rest because hello, y'all. I love rest. I want to nap all of the time. But when they get to their resting place, there's a large group of people gathered. So much for their nap. Jesus notices the crowd, has compassion on them, and teaches them many things. The disciples, being as astute as they were, they notice that, huh, perhaps the people need to be fed And they realize that they only have a little to offer. But Jesus blesses the little. Jesus blesses the five loaves and the two fish. And 5,000 people are fed. There's even enough left over for to-go containers. Chapter 6 is jam-packed. I told y'all. That's all in chapter 6. And still there's more. 
After this story, Jesus walks on water and then does even more healings. I could give four different sermons just on our text today because there's so much there. Mark is fast and furious in his gospel, and he really gets down to business. Since it's World Communion Sunday, though, it makes sense for us to talk about the way that Jesus offered nourishment to this crowd of people. Yes, there's this fabulously impressive miracle where Jesus takes a little and turns it into much, and we also need to pay attention to the way Jesus had compassion on the people who were gathered. Jesus had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Our passage says that Jesus began to teach them many things. I can't help but compare this to the story right before, the one I told you about Herod. At Herod's dinner, there is plenty of food for everyone. There's wealth, there's dancing, there are plenty of seats for the elite, but not for anyone else. Yet in Jesus' story, in this secluded, typically deserted place, Jesus sets a very different table. Jesus changes courses from taking a rest and instead, he teaches, he mentors, he shepherds. He's brought only a meager offering of food, and Jesus turns it into a feast for all the people gathered. He gives nourishment, and Jesus doesn't save it just for the elite. He offers it to everyone who is gathered. The people are looking for someone to shift the status quo that they're living in. They are yearning for things to be shaken up, for their faith to be reignited, for there to be less of these exclusive dinners. Jesus meets the people where they're at, and he offers them a nourishment that is accessible to all for all time. This is what we believe happens around these tables. It happened with Jesus there gathered with a crowd of people. It happened when Jesus, on one of his last days, was surrounded at a table with his disciples. It happens here every time we come together to partake in Holy Communion. When we open our hands and receive the elements we're receiving more than just bread and juice. We're opening our hands to a love that isn't confined to this world. When we come together at the table, we are reminded that we are united with a larger community of believers that goes beyond these walls. I want us to take a look again at verses 35 and 37. 35 through 37. Late in the day, the disciples came to Jesus and said, this is an isolated place. It's already late in the day. Send the people away so they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy something to eat for themselves. Jesus replied, you give them something to eat. You give them something to eat. As we consider what it means to come together as the body of Christ, as a common people united by a great love, may we also remember the disciples' charge to give the people something to eat. We don't just come to the table to Holy Communion to take. Instead, we come and are transformed by the generous grace Christ offers to each of us. We are so transformed that it overflows into the way that we do life day to day. Jesus offers us nourishment and love and grace and acceptance and all things that are good. When we open our hands to receive, we are then charged to give the people something to eat to share that goodness with everyone we meet. 
over the past month, this group here, you, this community, has been collecting items for the Plano Overnight Warming Station. If you don't know anything about what we call POWs, it is a station over in East Plano that is activated on nights where the temperatures dip below freezing. It serves as a place of warmth and nourishment for those on the street who are in search and need of a safe space to rest. We have a lot of congregants here at our church who volunteer at the station on those nights. If you're like, oh my gosh, I would love to do that. You're in luck. We are hosting a training on Tuesday for anyone interested. There are the details. A few evenings ago, there was actually a banquet here in this room where they celebrated the many volunteers who helped make the Plano Overnight Warming Station happen. At that event, there were rocks with the names of every single person who stayed at the warming station during the past year. People who were at the event took home rocks to pray over their names. And because so many people were served by the warming station, we have a table in the back of the room, you may have noticed as you came in, that is covered in rocks that weren't taken because there were so many. I encourage you all to take your own rock home with you after the service. On the rock, there will be a name of someone who stayed at the station. We ask that you hold them in prayer in the coming year. This is how we give the people something to eat. We pray for others. We volunteer. We listen. We build relationships. We teach. We mentor. We shepherd. We feed. We, too, have compassion. On this day, may we remember those things that bring us together, especially those things that tether us amidst deep divisions. May we rejoice that we have a God who has compassion on each of us and equips us all to give someone else something to eat. Amen. Let us join now in a time of Holy Communion. I remind you that this table here at Christ United does not belong to Christ United. You do not have to be Methodist. You do not even have to consider yourself a Christian to partake in communion this morning. If you are open to the mystery of God working in your life, you are invited to come. After we do the liturgy this morning, I will say the table is open. When I say those magic words, you can come forward to take Holy Communion. You can kneel on one of the tables here. There are cups that you can then dispose of once you consume in the silver buckets, and there's bread for you to take as well. Because we are still taking a lot of precautions with COVID, we ask that you please uh, space yourselves accordingly at the tables, or if you notice that they're a little full, maybe wait a second, let it clear out, and then come forward. If you are not comfortable taking communion at our tables, we do have a lot of different options. We have pre-packaged communion. They're found on both of these stools and the very back table here. In each of those pre-packaged communion options, there's also a gluten-free option. Also, also... We have a gluten-free option right here, too, at this circle table. We want everyone to feel welcome at the table. If that means waiting till the end and grabbing your own prepackaged as you leave, that's cool, too. However you get the elements this morning, we want you know, to know that you are welcomed, you belong, and the table is opened especially for you. Let us join together this morning. The table of bread and juice is now to be made ready. This is the table of the company of Jesus and all who love him. It is the table of sharing with the poor of the world with whom Jesus identified himself. It is the table of communion with the earth in which Christ became incarnate. So come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more. You who have been here often, and you who have not been for a long time, you who have tried to follow Jesus, 
and you who have failed, come. It is Christ who invites us to meet him here. On the night Christ gave of himself for us, he took the bread surrounded by his community at a table that was offered and open to all people. He broke the bread, blessed it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body that is broken for you. Likewise, when the meal was over, Christ took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is a sign of my new covenant, a love poured out to all people, a grace accessible to all. As often as you drink from this cup, do so in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Christ, this morning we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us. Christ died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by God's great love. God, by your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Amen. I invite you now to join me as together we pray the prayer Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be his name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The table is open. Let us come together. Right or wrong to anyone who hears it. 
Amen. As we leave this place, I encourage you, if this is your first time here at Christ United, we have a get connect, neck, get connect, get connected table right outside the atrium. We would love to tell you more. We also have our great welcome team out here who is happy to provide you more information. If you haven't heard it already, you are welcome here. We are so glad you are in worship with us. We want this to be a space where you can come, be yourself, bring your kids, even if they're loud. We want everyone here and to feel the love of Christ that we believe is for all people for all time. As we leave this place and re-enter the world, may you be confident that you are a part of the body of Christ. May we go forth strengthened and renewed, sharing Christ's love to the ends of the earth. Amen. Make his face shine.